our Sunday showdowns because we've got a big matchup that could light up the scoreboard. It is the Dolphins and the Bills, the league's top two scoring teams, going at one each other, well, one another, especially after the Dolphins dropped 70 on the Broncos last week. So, Rank, if we're looking at it, any Dolphins offensive players that maybe slow down this week? Well, I think I know everybody probably spent a lot of fab budget or your waiver wire priority on Devin Achan, but unfortunately, I have him as a mild sit this week uh, somebody that you would probably use as a low-end flex option i hate to break it to you he's probably not going to score four touchdowns this week i know it's crazy he's going to be used i, I think he's still going to be a valuable piece as a matter of fact going back during august i was saying this was one of the must-haves on your roster they will find ways to get him the ball creatively this season but unfortunately it's not going to be a thing that's every week so use him sparingly when the matchup is right and you know what the bye weeks are coming up soon so you'll be able to use them then this might not be the best week for you I'm saying you could start every single player in this game except for maybe the tight ends like Marcus said the top two scoring offenses the last two matchups last season between these two teams they each combined for over 60 points you must start both quarterbacks you're starting all your wide receivers I'm starting all of the running backs as well the Bills struggle against speed and this Dolphins offense has a whole bunch of it I even have a sneaky feeling about Dalton Kincaid in this one but you do not have to start the tight ends you made Durham Smythe sad with that I think <laughs> you can start the Dolphins defense and I know this is seems sort of weird when we talk about the top two scoring teams if you remember, and Rank pointed this out earlier in the week, the Broncos gave up 70 points. Their fantasy defense still scored two because turnovers and sacks mean a lot. And Josh Allen, for all the great things he does, he also turns the ball over a ton. So there's still an opportunity for the Dolphins defense to go out and put up some fantasy points. They're not a must start, but if you're really, really hurting at the position, they are not a terrible option for you. Commanders and the Eagles, big game in the NFC East uh, ranked. The Eagles been a lot more run focused this season. Do you think that continues? Probably a little bit, but I'm still going to go ahead and start both wide receivers. A.J. Brown's an automatic start for me, but Devonta Smith is also a guy that you can get into the mix. And I know that sometimes that when you're playing him, it's some peaks and valleys, but he has had at least 17 fantasy points in two or three games this season. He has five targets of more than 20-plus air yards this year. That's the most on the team, and he never comes off the field. He has played nearly 100% of the snaps, so I understand it's not always going to be as consistent as you would want it to be, but I still feel very confident going with Devonta Smith. All eyes this weekend are going to be on the Kelsey Swift combination in Philly. So start <laughs> DeAndre Swift this week. Look, he's averaging over 21 fantasy points per game the last two weeks. He has 305 rushing yards in that span. That is over 80 more yards than any other player the last two weeks. And he is the goal line back for the Eagles, which usually means he gets the honor of pushing Jalen Hurts in. But occasionally he gets a scoring touchdown himself. If you got fantasy points for assists, DeAndre Swift would be crushing this year. <laughs> I, I think deep sleeper Antonio. Antonio Gibson this week and it's been rough if you've been trying to start Gibson or even just have him on your roster but he is the pass catching back in this offense had a season high in snaps and targets last week in a negative game script against the Bills I know it didn't really amount to a lot of fantasy points but this week they face the best defensive line in the league and the Philadelphia Eagles Sam Howell will continue to be under pressure I think he's got to get the ball out quickly and that means Antonio Gibson should get a whole lot of opportunities it's a big week for revenge. College football has rivalry week. The NFL has yeah. revenge week. And one of those games is the New England Patriots and the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Zeke going to face his old team in this one. But, uh, you know, Ranky, look at this one. Dak Prescott had a pick, did not play well last week against the Arizona Cardinals. Can he turn that anger into success? He said it, uh, it made him upset last week. Does he turn that into good things? Maybe. Not this week. <laughs> Not against the New England Patriots. I'm actually going to be sitting Dak Prescott. I, I just can't do it. If you look at the first three games of the season, he has not finished higher than the quarterback 17 on the year. Even in a blowout against the New York Giants, the points weren't there. And the New England Patriots have been really tough on opposing quarterbacks this season. They have not allowed a quarterback to top 13 fantasy points in any game this year. They've allowed the sixth fewest points to the position. So if you have other options, I was able to go snag a couple of guys on the waiver wire over the past couple of weeks. I'm going with them. I just can't trust Dak Prescott at this point of the season.
on the other side, I think you could start Ramondre Stevenson. And I know he's coming off his worst game of the season. Zeke Elliott had a lot of volume. The revenge narrative is there. And a lot of you are getting worried about Ramondre. Stick with him. Last week was a game the Patriots were playing with a lead. This could be a game where they are trailing. And that means more passes going Stevenson's way. Plus, he is top six in snaps and touches this season. He has been the back that they like to use in the red zone a little bit more. I, I just think there's better days ahead for Ramondre. Well, Florio, you mentioned Ezekiel Elliott, and I think he is a sleeper this week because, first off, revenge. Uh, also because he's actually been the more efficient of the Patriots running backs, averaging over four, almost four and a half yards per carry, while Ramondre is under three yards per carry. Now, admittedly, Ramondre's had a much larger sample size so far this season. But another thing that was interesting, last week we saw Zeke getting involved in the two-minute drill, getting a few more target opportunities. So maybe there's an opportunity for him to get a bigger role in this offense. Ramondre's still the number one running back. Don't get it twisted. But maybe Zeke getting some more love here. Are, they really, are you guys really touting the points he scored at AT&T Stadium? Did you see that? Grab? Like, hey, he scored. Yeah, obviously he played for the Cowboys. He plays for a different – Joel, stop that. You guys, stop. There's somebody in, in, in Long Beach Airport right now who read that. It's like, oh, that's a pretty good – no, it's not a good note. It doesn't pertain to what he does with the – stop that. Hey, man. He's revenge be, against the stadium. Get your revenge against the stadium this week. Who knows? <laughs> uh, we got the Ravens and the Browns. This one might be the definition of slobber knocker, a potentially grind them out, gritty AFC North matchup. Uh, who has caught your eye on this one? Which is why I'm not going to play Zay Flowers this week. I think the Cleveland Browns defense is a lot better uh, than a lot of people think. At least uh, for me, it is very, it is very dominant out there. And so now I look at the Browns as one of those teams. Like, do I want to play these guys who are flex options, wide receiver two, wide receiver three type of guys? I do have other spots on my roster where I can find somebody who's going to have a better opportunity than Zay Flowers. This isn't. There's nothing to say that he's not a great player or anything like that. But in a run first team going against the Cleveland Browns, I'm going to sit the wide receiver. I agree. The Browns defense has been very tough. So is the Ravens defense. That's why I'm saying to sit Deshaun Watson this week in what I think could be more of a defensive matchup. Watson has been solid for fantasy so far this season, but watching him, he does not look like his old self yet. The Ravens defense has allowed the ninth fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks. They are top five in sacks, and they're allowing just 230 passing yards per game. And with there being so many good streaming quarterback options this week, I think you get away from Deshaun Watson. I can understand getting away from Deshaun Watson, but I still believe that Elijah Moore has some sleeper value. Maybe I'm just trying to make fetch happen because uh, I really want to believe in this. Last week, actually caught all nine of his targets. He's seen his targets increase in every single week. And Marlon Humphrey looks like he could be back. He's dancing on social media saying that he's ready to go this week. So he likely is going to try and lock up Amari Cooper, which means Deshaun Watson might have to go to another outlet, and that potentially is Elijah Moore. As for last night, David Montgomery was questionable heading into the game. Didn't look like it. Ran the rock 32 times for 121 yards, three touchdowns. That equals out to 34 fantasy points. After the game, Montgomery was all smiles, saying he could tell his son that he beat the Green Bay Packers. Wait, didn't that? He he, has, he Pack, never has he ever beat the Packers? I don't think he was there in 2018. Would have oh. been the last one when they won that. When the Bears won the North, I don't think he was on that squad. Oh, all right, so wow. there it is. Uh, that brings us to what we learned from That's last it. night's game. So, uh, I just learned that I guess David Montgomery has never beaten the Green Bay Packers, right? Was there something else that, that you shocking. learned from this? You know, I think it, we might need to take some consideration in sitting running backs against the Lions because all the guys in Portsmouth Blue, they're in my mentions. Like, I told you about Aaron Jones. <laughs> I'm like, Yo, Aaron Jones, first of all, injured. And I know, like, it's always a risk with these injured running backs because David Montgomery was coming in to the game with an injury designation. And I told my guy, Phil Wright, like, you know, from America's Got Talent, like, maybe not play. Uh, I don't know. But we said start David Montgomery, start Aaron Jones. It didn't work out for Aaron Jones. But the Lions have been tough against running. I'll give me credit. We'll see. You got week 10. You got Austin Eckler. Week 17, Tony Pollard. So if this is an actual trend where the Lions defense, you cannot run on them, you might want to start thinking about what you're going to do with Tony Pollard in Week 17. Patrick, if you get it. Patrick Mahomes has the high rushing game so far with 45 yards against them. I mean, Lions. Kenneth Walker had 20 points against them, so it's not like it's impossible. And I thought that as a receiver out of the backfield, 
Like Austin Eckler is a perfect example. Like I think that Austin Eckler would be able to score on this team, but it didn't happen last night with Aaron Jones. So congrats to the Lions. Yeah, it's a tough matchup. I always play Tony Pollard, though. I think you could consider sitting one of the Lions running backs, unfortunately, and it pains me to say Jameer Gibbs can be benched right now. He played just 38% of the snaps last night, is clearly the secondary option right now, sitting around 10 fantasy points per game, so maybe some weeks when the buys hit and stuff, you could flex him, uh, but do not drop him. I've had a lot of people ask me if they should drop him. No. I still think he could get more work as the season progresses, and he still brings the upside to change the landscape of your fantasy team we just need to see it first it has not worked out the way I think we anticipated it was not all bad for the Packers the thing I learned is that you shouldn't sleep on Romeo Dobbs and I was going back and forth for the last couple of weeks on who was the better option Dobbs or Jaden Reed and it looks like Dobbs has really separated himself from Reed the last couple of weeks 25 percent target share 25 percent targets per route run nearly 30 percent of Green Bay's air yards now Christian Watson being back will cut into those numbers but I think at worst, Romeo Dobbs looks like the number two target in the passing game for Jordan Love. Hanson usually brings the happy on Sunday, which is a good way to get us to feel good Friday. We talk about some players and we discuss how we may be feeling about them heading into week four. So, Florio, let's start with Tank Dell. Broke the Tekken, Texans rookie record for most receiving yards. I can say that in a game last week. How do you feel about him this week, though, going against TJ Watt and that Steelers defense? I'm feeling good. I feel like we're going to be rolling deep in fantasy points like Adele, like Tank Dell specifically. Last week, he was the top there. Right, right. Top target two weeks in a row now. He's top 20 fantasy points in each of those games. But what I don't think enough people realize, he was tackled at the one-yard line in one of those games, and in another, he had a touchdown called back due to penalties. So for as good as he's been, he could have been even better. The Texans passed the ball a whole bunch. I think you want to keep riding with their wide receivers. So Tank Dell is a go for Michael F. Florio this week. Rank, you have been feeling kind of like Mardi Gras when it comes to Chris Olave so far this season. Now that Jameis Winston is under center, how are you feeling this week? Oh, I feel great. Like you're sitting there at Cafe Du Monde, sipping some coffee, eating some beignets, just enjoying the morning and everything it has to offer. But first of all, no, 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 you got it wrong. <laughs> Jamal Williams, it's beignets, and they're delicious, and I love Chris Olave. and then stop. No, I'm telling you, you got it wrong. It is going to be a great matchup with him and Jameis Winston. Winston really loves targeting Chris Olave, so I feel wonderful about this. Olave was one of the guys coming into this season that was a definite, like, must-have kind of guy, and I think so far he's shown to be that, shown that to be the case. But what about Derrick Henry? For years, this guy has been leading fantasy teens, but now in Tennessee, things not so smooth. So how are you feeling, Marcus? You know, I'm feeling a little bit nervous, sort of like I got to take a test that I haven't really studied for. Uh, you know, look, I, I know the subject matter. I know the material, just like Derrick Henry knows what's up and knows what to do. But it just has not really worked out all that well for him. He has a 3.2 yards per carry average. He's never been below 4.2 in his career. And teams are just stacking the box. He's faced eight or more about 50% of the time. Two of the three games he's played this season, he has had fewer snaps and fewer targets than Tajay Spears. Now, look, the Bengals, they gave up big games to Nick Chubb. They gave up a decent game to Gus Edwards. So there is still a possibility for Derrick Henry to kind of get going. But it's been scary hours to start the season, so I'm a little bit nervous about having him in my lineup. Uh, yeah, hopefully it gets Fair better. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's get back to the Sunday showdowns. Why don't we? We'll start with an AFC West battle. It'll take place right next door over at SoFi Stadium. The Raiders and the Chargers, both these teams give up a lot of yards through the air. So, Florio, what's your fantasy advice here? I think you could start Josh Palmer this week. And I know I've been very excited for Quentin Johnson long-term this season, and I still am. But I think Josh Palmer is the immediate Mike Williams band-aid, and he should get some targets and snaps over the rookie in the immediate uh, next couple of weeks. He, last season without Mike Williams, averaged over 12 fantasy points per game. And the Raiders have allowed the second most touchdowns to receivers. Justin Herbert is throwing the ball a whole bunch. She'll start Josh Palmer this week. 
I'm going to go with Jacoby Myers on the other side of the football for the Raiders, who might actually be experiencing their first home field advantage of the entire game. <laughs> uh, the Chargers have allowed the most fantasy points to wide receivers this season. They allowed six receiving touchdowns uh, to wide outs this, this, uh, this year. So I feel really, obviously, Devontae Adams is a must start, but also start Jacoby Myers. I really do like Jacoby Myers this week. I also like Gerald Everett. And I know... It seems a little bit weird because Donald Parham has been going ham, at least when the Chargers get near the end zone, and he's been an obstacle to Everett's success. But it's Everett that's getting most of the tight end work for Los Angeles. And once again, the Raiders are a favorable matchup for tight ends. Plus, last season in two games against Las Vegas, Everett averaged nearly 14 fantasy points per game. Hopefully, the Chargers get him more involved, especially with no Mike Williams in the lineup. 49ers riding a 13-game win streak while the Cardinals and their offense have they surprised some folks, certainly. And we've talked about how they are not the doormats that we thought they would be this season. So, Florio, uh, are you rolling with an Arizona hype train guy at all this weekend? Uh, I had James Conner as a sit last week. I will not make that same mistake again, but I do think you should just beware of him right now. This is a really tough matchup, but... The fact that he came through last week and just the state of the running back position right now, you probably can't get away from James Conner. But the Niners have allowed the fewest rushing attempts and yards to running backs. There's a strong chance the Cardinals could be playing from behind in this one. So if James Conner doesn't find the end zone, you could be looking at a smaller fantasy output than you're accustomed to. I'm going to say to start Brock Purdy, uh, mostly because when I was talking earlier about sitting Dak Prescott, like, who are you starting over him? Uh, Brock Purdy, how about that? Uh, he's had at least two touchdown passes in seven of eight career starts. The 49ers have scored at least 30 points in seven of those eight contests. So I feel very comfortable moving on with him. And as a matter of fact, I don't know. I don't anticipate taking him out of the lineup anytime soon. Brock Purdy has been excellent. Uh, I know people like to nitpick him, but he's playing good football. As for me, I think you can flex Marquise Brown. Uh, I don't know any suburbs of Hollywood, uh, Florida. But anyway, uh, he's been playing pretty well, all things considered, so far this season. And as Florio mentioned, there could be a negative game script for Arizona, which means they're going to have to throw the ball. At this point, 53% of the targets have gone to either Brown or Zach Ertz. So I would think that Josh Dobbs, if he has to go to the air, is going to go a lot in Brown's direction. Remember the book, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day? Well, the NFL version of that, at least in week three, would be the Bears and Broncos and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Combined, they allowed 111 points. 70 of those, of course, the Broncos gave up to the Miami Dolphins. You look at the fantasy numbers from those matchups. It was not pretty. See that? Uh, the Broncos giving up 726 yards. I mean, that game looked like it looked like a non-conference SEC game with like Alabama rolling up Furman or something like that. Uh, a lot of fantasy points given up on both sides. Some giveaways there. Fantasy points scored. Uh, Denver doubled up on the Bears for whatever that's worth. Not that it makes a whole lot of difference. Anyway, that gets us to Seize the Day presented by Caesar Sportsbook and Casino. Now, in theory, somebody is going to win this game. Not a guarantee. Eh, that, not a guarantee. Not a guarantee. It could be a draw. Not a guarantee, <laughs> but ideally, per probably somebody wins this game, and hopefully they will help your fantasy team in the process. So, Florio, give us some positive vibes uh, about what you're looking at for this one. This game was heavily featured in Start Sit for me this week, and that includes DJ Moore, who I think you should be starting in your lineup. He's given you at least 13 fantasy points in each of the last two games, but this is really about the matchup. The Broncos have allowed the most passing touchdowns, fourth most yards, and and the Bears defense, like you just saw, they struggle as well, which means this could be a higher scoring game. Maybe then people are anticipating some back and forthness. I, I want exposure to this. It feels weird, but I want exposure to this game this week. It depends on who Patrick Sertain is going to be guarding because it could open up opportunities for guys like Chase Claypool and Darnell Mooney. But I'm looking at the other side of the football and Russell Wilson, who's been really good ever since Nathaniel Hackett has been replaced. He's averaged over 20 fantasy points uh, per game, and he's had at least 300 passing yards in back-to-back -back contests. So as much as you want to talk about Sean Payton and giving up 70 points last week, Russell Wilson actually been pretty good. Just dial up some more throws. 
to uh, Marvin Mims Jr., please. Russ, not the problem in Denver. Jontae Williams, not the problem in Denver either, and I think he will be a benefit to your fantasy team this week. The Bears have given up 121 rushing yards per game. They've given up at least one rushing touchdown in each game. I think this is one that stays relatively close. I don't see either team running off to a big lead here, and with Williams handling most of the rushing work, he's also getting some decent attention in the passing game as well. I think there's an opportunity for him to get you 12, 15, maybe even more points against the Bears defense. As for who finds the end zone, Javante Williams uh, at a plus 450. Justin Fields not too far behind him. Khalil Herbert getting some love there, as is Quentin Sutton and Jerry Judy all with similar odds. Appearance at MetLife Stadium. Oh. Jets fans saying welcome to New York in that Sunday showdown. I mean, rank will Travis Kelsey be the man on the field? Or do you think somebody else steals his fantasy shine? I think Isaiah Pacheco has a real opportunity against the New York Jets. A tough defense, but has allowed some production to the running back position this season. And so I think that in a game that could end up being one-sided in the Chiefs' favor, they could end up just running the ball. And Pacheco has 13 goal line rush attempts since 2022. That's the most. But also keep an eye out because Clyde edwards Hilaire keeps getting in more and more involved, and I don't care for that at all. <laughs> I think on the other side, you could sit your Jets. Just, just all of them. There's three Jets in particular that are fantasy relevant. Brees Hall. Garrett Wilson and their defense. You never play defense against Patrick Mahomes, and the Chiefs are in the bottom four in fantasy points allowed to running backs and wide receivers. If you start any of them, it's probably Wilson because you're hoping for garbage time. This feels like a game where we're going to be on Taylor Swift watch most of the second half. Well, if you are looking to stream a defense, I think you're going to be able to stream the Chiefs this week. That doesn't really take much to figure out why. The Jets have scored the fewest points in the NFL. Five giveaways, nine sacks allowed. They've given up a safety and a lot of calls for for them to move on from Zach Wilson. Do want to ask a Jets expert, though. I mean, Broadway Joe, do you agree with the Chiefs defense being a start this week? I've, you know, I've seen enough of Zach Wilson. All right? I've seen enough. You sit down. You sit down on the play. You go right down. What happens? I thought you are trying to win and make plays. You quit on a play. What is going on? It, 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 it's disgusting. We've got a special treat for you here. We were able to secure uh, Joe Namath. I just wonder if you had any further thoughts on that. Yeah, this is how bad the situation is for the Jets. Like, we're still making jokes and references to a guy who was last relevant in 1968. I know that the Chicago <laughs> Bears have not had a lot of success, and we're that team that also gets lumped in there. At least, at least our success came in the 80s. I can go out there and do a Super Bowl shuffle. I'm wearing a mink coat from a guy who played in 1968, who threw for 4,000 yards in 1968. <laughs> it's time to move on. I'm sorry, Jets. You made the wrong choice. Ah, that's, that's looking rough. Uh, if we could bring Adam Rank back here, though, so we can Too talk late. about the Rams and the Colts. I'm fully immersed. Uh, who's on the fantasy cheat sheet in this one? I'm too method. Uh, I, I don't know. I think Joe Willie Namath would like to throw the ball to Michael Pittman, who this has got to be. We got to talk about this because this dude needs to be started every week now. I get a lot of tweets, mostly from the Lions fans being like, you're a clown. Why do you have a job? But also <laughs> people asking me if you should start Michael Pittman Jr. And for a while I would be like, well, let me check when they go through my rank. I'm like, no, 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 wait, not just start this guy. He's been fantastic. Leads the team in receptions, receiving yards this year. And I think when Anthony Richardson returns, his rushing helps open it up for Michael Pittman. So I love this guy, and you should start him every week. On the other side, I think you should start both Rams rookies. You heard Rank talk up Puka Nakua. I, I agree. I think this is a bounce-back spot. Puka's been the first read on 40% of plays, and in the last two weeks, Kyron Williams has seen 98% of the snaps. No other running back is even close to that. Well, if you're starting Puka Nakua, Chances are Matthew Stafford's going to have a pretty good day. So I think he is a streaming option, certainly a guy that must be started in two quarterback formats because, look, the Colts pass rush, not as fierce as what the Rams saw last week against the Cincinnati Bengals. Stafford should have some more time to get the ball out, get it downfield. And, look, quarterbacks have done it through the air and on the ground against the Indianapolis. C.J. Stroud went for 384 and two touchdowns. Lamar Jackson ran for 101 and two touchdowns. Don't think Stafford's going to be running for 100 yards, but it is a big bounce-back opportunity opportunity this week for the Rams offense. In the meantime...
In honor of that broadcast, we're getting into the spirit, and let's give some analysis as if we were sitting in Andy's room. Welcome back to the show where we're not flying, we're falling with style. Uh, Rank, start us off. What are you looking at in this game? I'm very upset with the way they've made me dress right now. Because <laughs> I'm dressed like Woody, the worst character in the movie. Woody is awful, and he reminds me a lot of Kyle Pitts. Oh. Uh, the worst, like the somebody that you think is going to be the hero, ends up being the zero. Woody's awful. He tries to murder Buzz. He's super <laughs> selfish. And don't think that I'm letting you off the hook either, Arthur Smith. You're like Andy, who like, oh, yeah, you, you rook, Kyle Pitts rookie season. You got this cool toy. Oh, a 1,000 yards. Oh, new toy, Bajon Robinson, a.k.a. Buzz Lightyear. No, you're the absolute worst. I don't like it. I don't like Woody. He ruins the film for me. And by the way, Potato Head's right the whole time. Potato Head has got Woody nailed, and then he's somehow the villain. How does this work? Sorry, I'm still here. <laughs> Woody redeems himself. I, I, I like Woody. I, I, I Right now, this weekend, Kyle Pitts and Drake London are like Buzz Lightyear and Woody just holding hands, looking at a certain doom, and the Inferno from Toy Story 3, that has been the quarterback play the last two years, just dragging these two down. And I know Desmond Ritter might be watching this right now feeling like Forky, like, I am trash. Yeah, the quarterback play has been pretty terrible. And Arthur Smith, while we're at it, he's like Rex. He he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know what to do. Uh, it, it's been really rough for, for Pitts and for London, but unfortunately, I think you kind of got to pull them from your fantasy starting lineups. Yeah. You think your nieces and nephews to this movie? How have you seen it? I, I do you, listen, how, I how do you see Toy it? Story. I am of the Toy Story generation. Are you? Yes. Not Toy Story 3? Toy Story right. is the best one. In the meantime, for me, Evan Ingram, he's sort of like Mr. Potato Head, who, you know, Rank said was uh, was spot on because yes. Potato Head doesn't get top billing, but he sort of moves everything along. He keeps the whole group yes. together. I mean, Evan Ingram is not the headliner, but through the first three weeks, he's the tight end four. He's had at least five catches in every game. The Falcons have given up a top two tight end in two of their three games this season. So this is a good chance to get Evan Ingram. If you haven't already had him in your lineup. Like imagine if Evan did. Ingram was the one who's like, we don't need Urban Meyer. And then suddenly he's the bad <laughs> so guy. Like, what are you talking possible? about, Evan Ingram? Uh, uh, sadly, we're going to take off these costumes. But we're not done yet. We still got more to come here on Fantasy <laughs> Live. After the break, we have a few bold predictions that might have you saying these guys are crazy, as though somehow me wearing this astronaut helmet, foam and felt and all, was not crazy enough. Stick around. We're going to do weird stuff after the break, too. And get this off. He was ready to let Jesse go back into the storage. So would Drake London be Jesse? Who's the worst no, one? The, the, by far. <clears throat> you are the set.